are you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! crowd, I'm sure Phil Donahue is eating his heart out. And welcome all across the nation to all you stations across America who have joined us on the Wally Network. It's good to be here from our home base, beautiful Anaheim, California. And for you across America who may be joining us for the first time, where in the heck have you been? Yeah. This, hey, this is the program that tells it the way it is. Yeah. We take on those liberal lunatics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now on tonight's program, we have a UCLA student Roger Hanna, who's here, and believe it or not, he's in favor of this new movement to distribute contraceptives on high school campuses. It really is, it really is sick. I can just see all these teachers saying, here's your milk, here's your cookies, here's your contraceptive, have a good time. Absolutely okay. stupid. And then we have on the program, oh, America's number one wimp. <laughs> Alan Dollison, who says he's mad at Reagan because he wants him to have meaningful talks with Russia. Get out of here. You can't have meaningful talks with those idiots. All they want to do is conquer the world. I'm going to tell this guy, the only way we can have peace is peace through strength. Yeah. And then we have a, a psychologist, Whoopi, you know, and, and he has another book out. And here's a book called The Five-Minute Phobia Cure. He claims he can cure any phobia in five minutes. He may not last on this show for five minutes. All right. Now let's, let's introduce our great crew in the booth, our fabulous director doing another grand job, Brian Lockwood in the booth. And here he is. He, he is now internationally famous, our great floor director, Oscar. <laughs> and our great producer, Mary Pisano. <laughs> and of course, and, of course, my very good friend, the one, the only, David Kennedy. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. We're on our way. David, we got three standing way. ovations already. Already. Okay. 
And now it's time for our, hey, we're going to take some questions from the audience, but right now it's time for my commentary of the night. Let's hold it down in the audience if we can, okay? Some of these liberal members of the news media are not only ludicrous, they are downright outrageous, right? Now there are... Now, their opinions on certain subjects make you feel they should be taken away to the funny farm. What do you think? All right, now, for example, hold it. For example, I want you to take Stephen Chapman, columnist for the Chicago Tribune. You people watching in Chicago will be interested yeah. in this. Now, Stephen Chapman wrote in a recent article in the Chicago Tribune uh, about the death penalty. And the headline of Stephen's article reads, Capital Punishment, the death penalty satisfies our lust for revenge, unquote. Wrong, Stephen, wrong. The people of this country, hold it, the people of this country do not lust for revenge. We lust for justice. And the death penalty for cold-blooded murderers is justice. It is what they deserve. Now in, now, in his article, Stephen Chapman whines that, that the state of Indiana executed William Vanderveer. They electrocuted him. And he whines because they had some problems with the electric chair. It seems it took some, some 17 minutes and four attempts before Van de Veer was finally electrocuted. Listen, I don't shed one tear for William Van de Veer. He was convicted of murdering, listen, he was convicted of murdering his father-in-law by stabbing him 34 times. <laughs> And then he cut his body into pieces with a hacksaw. I don't care if it took 17 minutes to electrocute him. I shed no tears for this murderer. I save my tears for his victim, right? And for the victim's family. Columnist Stephen Chapman and so many other liberal bleeding hearts call the death penalty cruel. Chapman states in his column, quote, capital punishment is unnecessary. Society can simply imprison murderers for the rest of their lives. But, he goes on, life imprisonment, he says, does not satisfy this lust for revenge that prevails in America, unquote. He concludes by saying, a civilized society should feel ashamed of this nasty business of execution. Yes, we are indeed a civilized society, and because we are a civilized society, there is no room for murderers. We should feel ashamed and degraded and disgraced if we allow these cold-blooded murderers to remain in this civilized society. I say to you, Stephen Chapman, how dare you accuse the American people of having a lust for revenge? The people of this country only cry out for what is right and just. I'll be right back. Wednesday night at 9, Philly 57 wishes you... Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Now, hey, uh, David, do you have any, anything to say on my commentary? Yeah, just as you said, uh, it, uh, these people have such a hue and cry over it taking 17 minutes to electrocute somebody, they don't give a rap that it, he tortured them for hours. Yeah, right. 
Nothing's ever said about that. I wonder how long it, it took that man to die that was stabbed 37 yeah. times, right? Yeah. They don't care about that. Okay. All right, now we're going to get some questions from the audience, but first it's time for the mailbag. Here's something that was sent to me from uh, Mary Ann of Atlanta. Uh -huh. And she said, here's, here's a picture, Wally, I think you'll enjoy. So I'll show it to the audience first. And uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> You're telling them what to say to the Russians. Right. Now, here's, here's a letter from Arthur Alberts from Miami. And he says, Dear Wally, it seems to me that you should think before you insult someone on your program. Okay? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Arthur. I'm going to think right now. Hold on a minute. Okay, I, I just thought, you're a jackass. Here's one for, hold it, here's one from Sandra Miller, and she says, Dear Wally, hold everybody, she says, Dear Wally, my mother used to be a liberal, but after watching you for only four short weeks here in Chicago, she has seen the error of her ways, and she has even thrown away her Mondale for President button. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and finally, finally from Pompano Beach, uh -huh. Florida. Where's yeah. Pompano Beach? Oh, it's, it's down there near Miami. Hello, Pompano. Oh. Pompano. Oh, this comes from, uh, from Karen Wooten, and Karen says, Dear Wally, last night I watched your show for the first time, and I, I became an instant Wally fan. I'm sick and tired of Phil Donahue. Yeah! Okay, let's get to the audience. Come on up and give me your name. Here in USA! All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, tough time yes, the hockey. Uh, my name's Joe from Huntington Beach. Yes, sir. And I'd, first of all, I'd like to say this is a product of drunk driving right here. Yes. Neck injury back. Well, yeah. You know. I, I want you to know that I was also a victim not long ago. Right from behind. It's terrible. Uh, yes. I'd like to know your opinions on... Go ahead on all the, uh, your opinions on all the increased Soviet propaganda that's been happening. Like well, that. you know what really makes me really upset is the media here in this country, you're right, they print all of the Soviet propaganda every time Gorbachev makes a statement, it's printed right here in all of our newspapers and they give him interviews in all of our major magazines, but when Ronald Reagan makes a statement, they never print what he says in Russia. I think we should treat them the same way they treat us. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yes. Hi, Wally. I'm Kyle from Cerritos, and I was wondering what you think about, with all the airline crashes lately, what do you think um, the FAA should do about it? What do you think about that? Well, I think there are, are way too many accidents, and I say that the airlines, and I'm talking to you out there, if you're watching, I think they should be darn a little more careful, a lot more careful, before they send those, those planes into the air. What do you think? Yeah! Okay, yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, yes. Hi, Wally. Randy from Santa Ana. I'd like to know what you, why you think it took them so long to close down those gay whore bathhouses. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you this. If I had my way, I would close every bathhouse per month within 90 days. Don't miss it. It could change your life. Sunday, December 9th at 1230 a.m.
understand we have a celebrity in the audience. Ron Romanic is here. Hold on. Ron Romanic of the L.A. Angels. Stand up, Ron. There he Where is he? Where is he? Okay. He's been... Give him a nice round of applause. Let's hear it, huh? Okay. Okay. All right, now... In just a moment, are the California Angels. I'm sorry, yeah. the California Angels. In, in just a moment, we're going to bring our, our first guest here on the hot seat. But first, if you were watching last week, I had this guy, this, I hate to say what I like to call him, this member of the ACLU, and I told him on my show, on the air, that I had had Carol Sobel, the former director of the ACLU, on my program, and that she had refused to pledge her allegiance to this country. He called me a liar and said he didn't believe it. I told him I would play that bit mm -hmm. on my show this right. week. Right, David? Yes. All right. I hope Hugh Wilson is watching at home and all the members of the ACLU. I asked Carol Sobel to pledge her allegiance to her country and watch what happened. But you can tell me, do you, right now, pledge your allegiance to this country, the United States of America? Do you? Well, that's not relevant to the work of the oh! ACLU. Now, I hope you were watching that at home. She said, David, as you recall, yeah. that's not relevant. And I asked her time and time again to pledge her allegiance. And what did she say? At least a half a dozen times. She, she refused, refused to do it. refused to pledge her allegiance to this country. What do you think of that from the ACLU? So I, so I think Mr. Hugh Wilson, who called me a liar, should come back on this program and apologize to me. What do you think? Absolutely. And, David, I think that Carol Sobel, for refusing to, uh, to, refusing to pledge her allegiance to this country, should apologize to the entire United States. Right. Now, it's time for our first guest on the hot seat, and David, if you will. First up tonight, Wally, is Roger Hanna who is a UCLA student who believes we should pass out contraceptives on high school campuses. All right, now, Roger, uh, the reason I had you on the program is I thought a student would be very apropos to respond. You're a student at UCLA. I'm talking mainly about high school students now, but right. you were in high school not long ago. Now. Uh, for those of you across the country who don't know what's happening, something has happened here in Los Angeles that could spread all across this nation, and they're trying to have it spread all across America. They want to, here in Southern California, and they, and they passed a resolution to pass to have birth control clinics on high school campuses and pass out contraceptives to high school students. And that of course, could spread and will spread if we allow it all across America. I say high school campuses are, is no place to pass out contraceptives to students, right? Now, I want to I tell you this, Roger. By doing that, can't you see, by, by handing out contraceptives, right on our high school campuses, what that means is the school is really giving its approval of sexual activity oh, among no, no. young children. That's not what it's doing. In fact, it's doing just the opposite. It's a counseling program. You go in, you be counseled, and one of the things they do is they counsel you and say, are you sure you want to do this? And if the kid says, yeah, I'm going to have sex anyhow, it's a lot better to give them a condom than to have them go out and get pregnant and get an abortion like half the people do. Now, now hold on. That isn't what they plan on doing at all. There is no, you, you have not got your facts straight. There's not going to be a counseling program. What they're going to do is, what they plan to do is to have a 
birth control clinic. And all students have to do to get their contraceptives is come in with written approval from their parents and they'll be handed contraceptives. Now, how do we know that those written letters are really valid? How can they possibly prove that the student can write a phony letter and say it's from his mother or father and they can be given contraceptives? I say it's wrong and if mothers or fathers want their children to have contraceptives, they should give them to them in their own home. The thing is, though, Wally, there are a lot of parents who aren't as conscientious as Wally George and who don't give them to the kids. And they sign a permission slip. The kid can go in there. Gets, I'm not saying you go to freshman orientation and set out a box of condoms. What are you saying? I'm saying that with doctors and counselors, they counsel them and they give them the prescriptions for things because you know what the abortion rate is? For teenage pregnancies in this county, it's 49%. Do you want to have people be aborted? Do you think little babies should be aborted, Wally? I'm against abortion, but I'll tell you this. Hold on. I'll tell you this right now, Roger. Instead of opening up a little counter and passing out their, their, uh, uh, well, whatever. <laughs> passing. I mean, instead of opening up a little booth and passing out contraceptives, why don't they counsel these young high school students on why it's wrong to have sexual relations in the first place? Now, you know what? Hold on, Roger. And you know what the excuse is? Believe it or not, some of the school board members, what their excuse is on school boards are saying, well, everybody's doing it. That's their excuse. Lots of other people are saying, Roger, about marijuana. Everyone's doing marijuana. So should we open up a drug counter no. as well? Now, Wally. Yes. This program, this program has already happened. This program's already happened in other parts of the country. And what they found out was it reduced, it reduced the pregnancy rate. And you know that unmarried women who are teenagers who have children, don't graduate high school. 80% of them don't. But after counseling at the St. Paul uh, Clinic in Minnesota, they did graduate. 85% of them graduated, whereas before they didn't. Well, here, here is the whole answer. I'm trying to tell you this. High school is no place to get involved. Yes, it is, Wally. It is high not. High school is a place where you're supposed to educate people. All right, educating them is not handing them out contraceptives. It's giving a stamp of approval I and mean, what they're doing is they're saying, here is your, here's your contraceptive, now go out and have a good time. That's what they're saying. Wally. Now, hold on. Hey, if a girl doesn't want to get pregnant, she doesn't have to get a contraceptive or, uh, from a high school counter. If she doesn't want to get pregnant, all she has to do is say no. no. I'm usually pretty proud of America, but right now I'm not because I read that America has the teenage pregnancy and abortion rate is twice that of all other developed countries. And that's because... No, it's not. The, the... I haven't said anything yet. Wait a minute. That's, that's because too many mothers and fathers in this country are not living up to their responsibilities, and if they would give them counseling from, from age but not. eight or... But they should be. But they're not, and teenagers are then getting pregnant answer, and having abortions. Then the answer is not to hand out contraceptives in high schools. The answer is to have more responsible parents. I'll be right back. Uh, this new movement that could spread all across America, because it started here in Los Angeles and soon will be spreading across America, where in, on high school campuses they will be passing out contraceptives to students. I say no, he says yes, I'm right, he's wrong, right? <laughs> but, but, hold on, we'll get back to, the, to our guest in a moment, and then we'll take some questions from the audience. But first, David, do you have something to say on that? Well, Roger, you said you don't think parents are, re are responsible enough, take enough responsibility. I think we may have taken a step toward beating that today. Some state just passed a law that says that the parents are now going to be financially responsible for the offspring of their minor children. How about that, huh? That'll get them.
Okay. Uh, hold on, what I'm telling you. We'll get on with this in a moment, but, but first of all, all across America, and you people here in Los Angeles, if you want to come down to one of our tapings here, we tape every Wednesday night, 52 weeks a year on Wednesday evenings. We never take a vacation. We have all new shows all year long. How about it? Every week. <laughs> and if you want to come down here, here's the numbers on your screen to call. If you're going to be in Los Angeles or you people already are living here, call the numbers on your screen. We'll get your name and your telephone number. And uh, I'll tell you what, we'll call you down here as soon as we can to get you in the audience. The numbers to call in the 213 or the 818 area code, 464-6111, 464-6111. And then, of course, get ready, get ready. The, the world-famous area code, 714-999-999. Finally, they got it. They got it. it. Now, if you want to write to us, and we do love to get you get your letters from wherever you're watching us, please tell us what station what station that you're watching on the Wally Network, and, and what uh, city you're in, and so forth. Write to us. Love to get your letters. I may read your letter on the air. And if you want information about the official Wally Fan Club, let us know. Our address is very simple. Just write to Wally George, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California. 92803. That's Wally George, Hot Seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. Now, we're back to our guest, and uh, in case you, you just joined us, this young man who's a student at UCLA advocates the passing out of contraceptives on high school campuses. I'm against that. And here's another reason why, and I want you to answer this if you can, Roger, which okay. I doubt. <laughs> what about... What about the young girls in high school who don't want to, who really are, quote unquote, good girls, who don't want to have sex anymore? This is going to really undermine those girls because the minute they say, it's wrong, I don't want to do this, what's the guy going to say? How can you say it's wrong when the school is passing out contraceptives? Am I right? <laughs> That. Well, Wally, I, can I bring up something else? No, answer that first. No, no. Wally, I think anybody who doesn't want to have sex, and I think not having sex in high school is a darn good idea, and I think anybody who doesn't want to have sex isn't going to have sex. But can't you understand? Can't you get that through your thick skull that when high schools are passing out these contraceptives, they are saying to the students in so many words, we give you our approval, right? That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. You know, Wally, one thing you're always talking about on this show, at least when I tune in, is how there are a lot of people on welfare, mothers living off welfare, right? Do you know that 60% of the mothers on welfare had a child as a teenager? And do you know that teenage abortions are paid for by the state? One out of three is paid for by the state. It costs $105 million a year. I'll tell you, and do you know that the answer, as I stated in the last segment, is not the passing out of contraceptives, but teenagers in their high school years abstaining from sexual encounters. That's what I said. All right, let's bring it. All right, we have someone else here who wanted to make a, an appearance and, and make some statements on this, and you, you, you're going to love this, Roger, because he's on your side. His name is David Blair, and he wanted to come down and make a statement. All right, David, you feel that it's a good idea. Why? Go ahead. Okay, in 1978, they started it in Sweden, okay? The United States and Sweden, the abortion rate was about the same. In 1981, the abortion rate dropped 27% in Sweden, and it increased 59% in the United States. All right, all right, so what are you trying to tell us here? Okay, you're against abortion. Yes. And you're against birth control. I am saying this. I don't care what they do in Sweden. I don't care what they do anywhere else. This is the United States of America. And I say, morally, it's wrong for schools in this country, anywhere, to hand out contraceptives because it does 
give a stamp of approval, and I say it's morally wrong in this United States of America. Yeah, I think so. If the system works... It can work for the USA just like it works for the other countries. If you've got a 59% increase in two years in abortions with no system, and then in, in Sweden, you've got I the system... I don't want to hear about Sweden. I'm talking about the I'm United... talking about giving out the contraceptives on campus. I'm saying... Listen. What I'm saying is on a high school... Do you know how, young, how young some kids are in high school? Between 14 and 19, I sure do. Some are 14 and 15 and 16. That's right. And you support that? You're out of here. Yeah. I'm out of here. Yes, come on up. Put it down. Okay, yes. First of all, Roger, I want you to know, there's a book that has been written against premarital sex, and it's the Bible, and it says it's wrong. Yeah! And what do you say about Jesus Christ that it's wrong? What do you say? I say premarital sex is wrong, too. But there are going to be people doing it, and I say it's better for them to make one mistake than two, right? One mistake? How can you say that? It's the biggest mistake of their life. And you just say, you say it's okay for them to go have sex whenever they feel like? I think it's a lot better for them to have sex than for them to have an abortion, yeah. Hold on, pal. They have, they have... What he's trying to say is, it is, it is morally wrong for, it's just as wrong for the, for the schools to be handing out this kind of, of thing, to be handing out contraceptives, is just as wrong as to hand out needles to in inject drugs into their veins. Because by handing out drug, hold on, by handing out, if they were to hand out drug paraphernalia at schools, because everybody's doing it, if they did do that, it would advocate the There's use... There's something a little different, while they hold handing on. out drugs, Let me finish. nobody's for drugs. Let me finish this. I'm drawing an analogy here, stupid. Listen to me for it's a minute. It's not a good analogy, Snow Cop. Listen, listen to me, and then you can answer. What I'm saying is, the whole, the whole argument of the school boards is that everybody's doing it. That means sex. And so, what if it's the same thing as if the, the school board thought that everybody is doing drugs and they were to hand out drug paraphernalia to students, that would mean that they were saying it's okay to have drugs. Now, on the same basis, by handing out this kind of thing, by handing out contraceptives, what they're saying is it's okay to have sex among high school students, and I say that's wrong. Yeah. You want to answer that? Yeah. Go ahead. You say that... Wally! Hold, hold, hold. I yes. think everybody here agrees with you that it's wrong, but kids are going to be doing it anyhow. And I'm saying, if you say that no one can have contraceptives in school, there are going to be more teenage pregnancies, abortions, miscarriages, the maternal Con deaths. Everybody Come on, Wally. Everybody knows contraceptives are readily available. They don't have to pass them out in high school. You know what a yes, contraceptive yes, costs, Wally? Oh, I'm sorry if it costs too much for you. <laughs> Wally! If these on, kids aren't going to pay for a contraceptive... He's saying that contraceptives are too expensive. They should get them for nothing from the school. Yeah. Go ahead, yes. I think if they were going to give the, uh, anything out of high school, it should be a haircut for this guy. But, All right, uh, yeah. But I, if, if contraceptives are so expensive, then why don't they take that same money and use it for sexual awareness classes? Because in health, they don't teach us exactly what we need to know. So maybe to take that money and use it for something a little more important like... Yeah, I agree on that. That's good. Part of these clinics, these clinics are set up, they're not just set up, they're not, there's not just a box of condoms and say, please take one. They're set up, they counsel you, and they, they're... You're wrong, part, you're No, wrong. I'm not wrong. I told you in the very beginning, the but only... you're wrong, Wally. The, you're wrong, the only... You're pre wrong. The, hold it. The only... The only requirement to get these contraceptives is written permission from their parents, which can easily be forged. Let's bring up our, our next guest. Yes, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. In the Bible, it says, um, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And how can you explain that saying what you, uh, what you say is right, when the Bible is right? Okay, the Bible's right, but... Okay? But not everybody... 
everybody's gonna hold vote. On. Hold on. The Bible is right. This young man is right. The school is wrong. You are wrong, and you're out of here. Okay. Make your home. Let me say this to all the people across America. Here we are in our third year, David, yep. and I want to give credit where credit is due. The success of this show, we would never have had this much if we didn't have, week after week, the greatest studio audiences yeah. in America. Yeah. This is one of the best. And I'll tell you, this is one of the best tonight we've ever had. A lot of adrenaline going, David, when I see this kind of enthusiasm, right. and that's great. And, and now, in just a moment, coming up in our next segment, as you saw on the screen, we're going to be having the author of this book. He's a, a so-called psychologist. Uh, he has a book out called The Five-Minute Phobia Cure. He says he can cure any phobia in five minutes. Sure. Well, we'll take him on. But in the meantime, we have our next guest, and David, introduce him, if you, if you will. Okay, back for another visit to the hot seat, Wally, is Alan Dollison, who tonight says that we should have meaningful discussions with the Russians on SDI. Oh, come on. All right. Here he is, our resident Russian apologist once again. And Alan, I don't know why... I don't know why you feel we can have meaningful talks with the Soviet Union on anything. Everybody knows what the Soviet Union is. They're made up, not the people, but the leaders are made up of a bunch of lying idiots. You can't believe one thing they say. They say one thing and they do another. Am I right? 100, 100, that is 100% not true. Let me give you an example of how we can... 100% non-true. Wait, let me no. Give you, let me give you an example. The perfect example is the SALT II Treaty, which you probably heard of. The SALT oh. II Treaty was drafted under President Carter, but because the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, President Carter withdrew the treaty from the Senate before it could be approved. But they agreed in principle that they would ratify and they would continue to abide by the treaty, okay? When it came time for Ronald Reagan to make that same agreement in 1985, he agreed to continue to abide by the treaty. Now, would the president continue to abide by a treaty that the Russians aren't? I don't think so. I... If they really were breaking even the smallest component of it, he would not, he would break the small, he would Ronald break the Ronald Reagan component. has stated many, many times that the Russian people, that the Russian government has had seven treaties with this country and have broken seven treaties with this country. <laughs> And he also... They have it. He they also, have it. Oh, wait on, Alan. He also has pointed out very, very clearly what he thinks of the Soviet Union. He calls them an evil empire, and they are an evil empire. Well, whether they're an evil empire or not is a matter of semantics, but the fact is he has agreed to abide by the treaty, so he must think he must I, trust yes, in some way. I think what he said was that we would uh, abide by the treaty to the same degree that the Russians would. And they have continued That's what he said, though. And if they don't, we won't. Yeah, but they have right, right. They, they have it for five years, and they're certainly not going to not abide by it with, the Re with President Reagan in office. Now, I don't know the time what... to not abide by it was with President Carter. I don't know the why. The so-called softy. Alan, hold on. I don't know why in the, in the world you and you other liberal lunatics out there could possibly be against the Strategic Defense Initiative when all it is, it's not offensive. Oh. It is strictly defensive. The Strategic Defense Initiative is to protect this country from a nuclear holocaust. Who could be against that, right? right. That's not... That's not true either. Star Wars or Strategic Defense Initiative is the greatest offensive weapon that this country would ever possess. Let me tell you why hold it's an on, offensive he, weapon. Uh, hold on. If it hold, really hold on, Alan, before you do that, before you do that, you, you said Star Wars, and that's what I, what I hate too, is you people in the liberal 
parts of society and in the media have labeled that Star Wars. It should never have been called Star Wars. The reason you liberals label it that is to try to ridicule it and call it Star Wars like it was some kind of a Buck Rogers thing and also saying wars, it, it would imply that this, that this initiative would bring about war. If well, anything, it should be called Star Peace. Star right? Yeah. Let me tell you what... Let me... Let, let me tell you what let me tell you what Star Wars will do and I can call it Star Wars because William F Buckley who is one of the most conservative members of the media calls calls it Star Wars so certainly certainly people on the right call it Star Wars well I don't it is a form it is a way the United States can launch it is a way of the Hold United it. It is a way the United States can launch a first strike against the Soviet Union and then shoot down their retaliatory missiles and dominate the world just like the Alan, Russians want to. Alan, that is to. absolutely wrong. The How do you think they won't? The strategic That's defense... The... Hold on, Alan. The strategic defense initiative is only to put a shield around this country which, which would, by laser beams, be able to shoot down Russian missiles if they are fired at this country. How do you... I say we need that kind of defense. How do you know... No, wait. How do you know? How do you know if we don't? How do you know that if we have the capability to destroy retaliatory Russian missiles, which what, which is what they would be if we launched the first strike? You don't think we would do that? Get somebody in, like, get another... Uh, are are get you trying to say that this country, the United States of America, would start a, another war, a nuclear war? It is a matter of fact that we have refused to make that statement, that we will never start a start a nuclear well, war. Well, I have news The Soviets you. have. I know that... Well, you can't trust those idiots. Well, we have... We won't even make the statement, so apparently you can't trust these idiots. I'll tell you, this country... Oh, would, This country. Alan, if you want to see an idiot, look in the mirror when you get home. Let me answer that. If you, if you, hold you look on, in the let mirror. me answer you. If, if you really, if you really believe that this United States of America would launch a nuclear attack against anybody, then you don't belong in this country. Ellen, don't you want the United States to have superiority? It, it follows if we don't, they will. You must want them to have superiority no, over us. No, all I... No. What's, what's wrong with us having superiority? All I want is parity so we can... No, so we can I establish want, a policy. No. Parody, will, parody will rid parody or mutual assured destruction, which is the full, which is the policy that's enacted when there is nuclear parity. Parity will mean no nuclear war for any. I don't think a poor Russian over there should die from a nuclear bomb, just as any poor American should. I say this: Richard Nixon has said it. Ronald Reagan has said it. General Patton has said it. Anybody who knows the Russians have said it. The only way to have peace with Russia is peace through strength. Yeah! Adolf, you, you, forgot, you forgot the first and foremost spokesman of that policy, and it was Adolf Hitler. Oh. oh. Hitler, Hitler promised peace. Hitler promised peace for Europe through strength. Did he deliver peace? Are you comparing Hitler to, to, to Ronald Reagan, the president of the United States? If the shoe fits. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If the shoe fits. Are you saying that, that, are you saying Ronald Reagan is like Adolf Hitler? I would have to say that on the ideological spectrum, President Reagan is closer to Adolf Hitler than he is to Karl Marx. tell you one thing it's people like this 
who are a danger to this yeah. country. Because, David, as you pointed out, and, and as we have tried to point out, we must be superior to the Soviet Union because, as, as you know, David, the only thing that will stop them from launching a nuclear attack is to know that we could annihilate them if they do. Am I right? Absolutely. I, I'd sleep. I'd sleep a lot easier tonight if I thought we had superiority rather than the other side. That's right. And I'll tell you, America is number one, and it will stay number one. I'll be right back. Last guest on the hot seat. Last up tonight, Wally, is Dr. Roger Callahan, who is a psychologist and the author of a book, The Five-Minute Phobia Cure. All right, here we go. Give you a hand to start Well, with. Doctor, I'm sure that, that you appreciate this warm welcome, right? Yeah, okay. Doctor, Dr. Callahan, the author of The Five-Minute Phobia Cure, correct? Now, first of all, Doctor, you are a doctor, right? Right. First of all, I can't believe that you can state or that you could possibly cure a phobia in five minutes. Do you believe that? you possibly claim to cure a phobia in fi how can you do that well i don't claim it wally i, uh, I realize that uh i realize that it uh, stretches the imagination to believe that it's possible i've been all over the country on radio and television it's a matter of public record i cure indeed i cure lifelong phobics no matter how severe in a few minutes and i've treated five of them in your while i was waiting to go on the air but, but, but the, you know, i had the I mean, last night I, I read your book, and you claim some out some outrageous thing. Hold it, gang! You claim outrageous things like you can you can pound your eye, knock your eye, uh, a tap on your finger, and that's going to cure a phobia. Do you really mean that? Yes. Come on. First of all. Would you please explain to me, doctor, what is in this book? You have the eyes closed tapping cure. What is that? Yeah, I'm, I'm working with the uh, energy system, uh, Wally. It comes out of the field of uh, a lot of research done in the area of chiropractic. But what is the eyes closed tapping cure? The eyes closed, when you close your eyes, you're accessing relatively more of the front of the brain than the back of the brain. Yeah. What I'm doing when I'm treating phobics, and there's never been a treatment as powerful as the Callahan treatment ever. But Dr. Callahan, I'm here you say in your book here, it, it says you close your eyes, yes. you tap the back of your hand 35 times, and your phobia is cured. What do you mean that? I mean, doctor, doctor, I hate, I hate to tell you this, I hate to tell you this, but that sounds ridiculous to me. Uh, I'm aware that it sounds ridiculous, and that's why I welcome the opportunity to demonstrate this, the most powerful all right, all right. treatment of all time. All right, wait a minute. Now, my good friend, uh, uh, David Kennedy, has a phobia he's had for years. See if you can cure him. David, tell the doctor what your phobia is. You, you think you can cure my phobia here in five minutes? What is it? My phobia is that I don't believe in psychologists. Yeah! Now, Dr. Callahan, do you believe if he closes his eyes and taps the back of his hand 35 times, he'll believe in psychologists? No. No, but if, he ha if he'll be open to facts and will question the people that I've treated, took an average in two and a half minutes, five people here. I don't know if they're all here now, but some of them are here. Uh, in fact, if we have enough time, I'll try to treat somebody right no, now. No, we don't have the time, but I'll... See, you give me a chance and I'll show you. How much time we got, Oscar? Well, uh, my one. The five-minute five minute, five minute phobia cure. You also have something here that is called the humming cure. You hum out loud, and you sing any song, and you tap your hand, and you're cured. Is that true? Well, each one of the things you're mentioning is one of the treatments. For example, right. when you hum, you're activating the right portion of your brain. When you do arithmetic, right. the left portion right. of your brain. Let me do something. Let me tell you something about your five-minute phobia cure. I'm going to practice what you say. I am now going to close my eyes. I'm going to tap my hand, and I'm going to tell you... Here's what you can do with your five-minute phobia cure.
The opinions expressed by Wally George and his guests do not necessarily reflect the views of this station or its sponsors. Philly 57.